find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show episode 101, 101. Wow, we're in the triple digits and I'm not going to be used to that for a while. Uh, but this is the show where we talk about independent independent pro wrestling and independent pro wrestlers and the people around independent pro wrestling. I happen to shoot video for independent pro wrestling. I said it way too many times. I'm done tonight. Uh, <laughs> locally here in the Pittsburgh area for uh, IWC and the RWA and, of course, working with the Indie Wrestling.us. With me from San Antonio, Texas, he also works in independent pro wrestling. Uh, he is the voice of uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling down there. Eamon, paying that Eamon to please on the Twitter. How you doing tonight, sir? I am doing fantastic in this new year. Like you said, triple digits is very weird for this show. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. Let's, let's, when we get to 200, that's when I'll start to have kind of a... A mental trip, so wait, to speak. Wait till we get to the ten year anniversary of this show, just like the main wrestling mayhem show. Uh then then wow, that'd be weird too. Uh but we got a great guest here tonight, We're ready to talk about the independent pro wrestling. It's been a few weeks, uh and yes, I've been recovering the entire time since that last faded episode. Uh and I still have uh flarp noises and stuff from when the uh the, the sexy talented dudes were down here in the studio. Uh, so we're going to settle it down a little bit and get back to business here in, uh, 2016. Uh, but you can find out that, uh, unfortunate episode and so many more at, at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Subscribe to this show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, channel on YouTube itself, on Facebook, the great Wrestling Mayhem Show group. We talk about all kinds of pro wrestling over there with the crew from all over the country and I think some international as well. And, uh, and, and join us and let us know what you think. Uh, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com is the email. Phone number is 412-206-WMS0. And if you want to support the show other than sharing it with all your friends and show them some awesome stuff and some awesome conversations about indie wrestling. Um, we, we also have a Patreon, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. And you can support through there on the main show itself. So who do we have this week here, uh, Eamon? Well, this week on the show, uh, we have a very special guest, uh, uh, somebody uh, just starting out in the wrestling business, uh, but uh, he's already uh, doing some spectacular stuff, particularly for uh, uh, a guy you may know, Booker T, uh, his promotion, Reality of Wrestling, as well as some other stuff around the Texas area. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Hi on. How are you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> great, great having you on. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh I, I guess the um, the first way we kind of start most of these shows off is uh, kind of an icebreaker question of sorts. Uh, everyone on our show kind of got into wrestling one way or the other, but uh, uh, what was your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? My first ever memory, I'm pretty sure I was like in kindergarten or first grade, and my mom, she worked at the elementary school that I went to, and she ended up staying late. Uh, because she had to set up for like a Girl Scout brownie thing. So I was in her office and I was like watching TV and I was scrolling through the channels and like they didn't have cable, obviously. So I remember seeing at the time I didn't know it was Sting. I thought it was like Kiss, like the band. <laughs> and it completely <laughs> threw me off. I was like, what is this? And that was my first ever memory of wrestling ever. Awesome. Thank you. Good kind of introduction. Uh, after that, like, sort of, how did you get, you know, sort of starting to watch, like, watch wrestling more frequently? Was it, were you a WCW, WWF kind of person? Uh, uh, where did you kind of decide on that kind of thing? I was more a uh, WWF. Um, that was my first experience with wrestling, but I never really truly got into it. Probably maybe like a couple months later when. Um, my older cousin Donnie was like, Hey, look at this. And I started watching with him and my grandpa who is from Mexico, he like grew up going, watching like the Lucha shows in Mexico. So he, I used to watch it with him all the time and he was like super into it. I didn't know like my family was really into it until I started getting into it. My mom, 
she used to go to the Sam Houston Coliseum in downtown. And she, like, once I started getting more into it, she showed me, like, pictures of her with, like, Eddie Guerrero and, like, Hulk Hogan. So that's kind of where it started, you know, getting really into it. I was more of a, like, WWF SmackDown kind of person. <laughs> awesome. And, and that's cool to hear because I know it's, uh... – I know families in particular can be interesting, whether it's like they're supportive or not of, of, of you know, particularly wrestlers and stuff like that. But it seemed, would you say your family is definitely very supportive of, of your love of pro wrestling? Yeah, I'd say they are. My mom's just always like, please don't get hurt. Please don't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Health insurance, don't get hurt. <laughs> definitely. Oh, well, uh, and transitioning to that sort of uh, uh, deciding to train to become a pro wrestler, when did you sort of have the idea that uh, – you actually wanted to, to do this uh, uh, and become a pro wrestler? When I was in second grade, I kind of already knew I wanted to do it. And at the time, I was really confused. Like, how do you become a wrestler? Like, do you just show up with, like, a job application? Like, I had no <laughs> clue. Like, how do people do this? And um, so I watched it for a really long time. And then kind of when I got towards middle school, I kind of stopped watching it because it wasn't cool anymore. Hmm. And um, several years later, I started watching it again. And um, I went to a TLC pay-per-view here in Houston. And I think it was the night before Booker T was having his Christmas Chaos show, which is at the time was like the biggest show of that promotion. So I went to that and I was like, Dang, this is so cool. Like, this is how people get into it. Hmm. And I talked to Book after the show, and I was like, how do I become a wrestler? And he was like, join my school. <laughs> I was like, okay. So they had this um, thing called the fantasy camp where you basically go for, like, a day, and you kind of just experience, you know, what it's like to be in the ring. I did that, and Kevin, who is kind of like the booker for Rally of Wrestling, he was like, hey, you know, you should really consider coming back. So at the time I was in a sorority. So I literally dropped my sorority. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm. And I started training. Oh, wow. Very cool. And when, uh, how long ago would you say was this? Uh, when you this started? Maybe like two years ago. Awesome. So, and like you mentioned going into it, like not knowing specifically how someone gets into wrestling, how were how was the training like? Did you, were there anything that you didn't sort of expect when when you actually started training in the ring? Uh, any sort of challenges? Um, I mean, I didn't expect there to be so much conditioning. Uh, the first like three weeks, you don't even get to like you don't even touch the ring. You just condition the entire time, and that was kind of used to weed out the people that truly want to do it. <laughs> um, I re- the thing that like really threw me off was. Like, there's so many different ways to do one thing. So Book's philosophy is, like, it's not wrong if it looks right. So you might, like, do a completely different way than everyone else, but as long as it looks right, then it's good. So I remember, like, learning to run the ropes threw me off because I learned it from one trainer. I learned it from another trainer. And I remember that day, like, Shelton Benjamin came into the to mm-hmm. the training facility, and he's like, oh, you need to do it this way. And I was like, how do I do it? Like, everyone's telling me different ways. So that was like what made it hard, but then kind of just getting kind of the basic principle of it and kind of tweaking it your own. That's what, you know, when that started happening, I felt like I started getting the hang of it. Very cool. And and if if I'm right, uh, you actually started, as far as like being on the reality wrestling program, you started valeting, uh, if if I'm not mistaken. Um, Yeah, I did. um, I did a battle royal and I did like this thing called like a, five carat diamond invitational hmm. um i did those two before i started battling but it wasn't oh, okay. like it wasn't like a regular appearance i would say definitely and uh we've actually had a couple people on uh uh from reality wrestling uh the pump patrol uh, uh mm-hmm. most recently uh and i talked to them a lot about sort of because obviously reality wrestling they produce a lot of stuff for their youtube channel and it it's definitely seems like a very high production value sort of show uh, do you get that as well a lot in your training when it comes to, you know, how to wrestle in front of a camera in particular and something with that sort of production level? Yeah, they um, sometimes we'll go through like drills where like this is hard cam. So work towards that camera hmm. or they always emphasize like keep your head up, keep your head up, make sure they can see your face. Everything is 
like a still shot. So make sure not necessarily like purposely pose, but make sure you're always looking good. It's a 3D experience. It's a 3D. You need to move around. Um, it's not 2D. So they they do emphasize that a lot. Book definitely emphasizes that a lot and character development a lot. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and and would you say particularly because also Booker T obviously does a lot currently still with WWE. Do you think a lot of the stuff that he, you know, the training there is to groom you guys to, you know, maybe get onto like a product like WWE or something similar? Yeah, I believe so. Um, when he was on Tough Enough, I don't know if you ever watched any of the shows, but mm. they had like some really tough conditioning stuff going on. And so when he came back from that, he had us like all oh, conditioning. This is what they're doing at the Performance Center. And after being there at the Performance Center for so long, doing Tough Enough, that's kind of what transitioned into us getting this new like facility, which is almost like a mini wholesale. Mm. Very cool. Uh, and now, obviously, you're doing more stuff in the ring. I know from sort of the recent episodes of Reality Wrestling, you're going to be challenging soon for the Diamond Division title. Mm. Um, uh, what's it like to have been, you know, moving up the ranks? I guess you could say, getting some more uh, high-profile stuff uh, in that company. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, I remember when I first started book, didn't even know my name and now he knows my name and you know, him having that trust in me to do certain things makes me feel really great. But at the same time, I've been there for a while. So I kind of feel like it's my time. I'm like, I'm ready. Like it's, it's been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. So it's really exciting. Definitely. And uh, also with like the character development you mentioned as well, obviously you've got a, uh, a very distinct look, I, I, I think also with, uh, the uh, uh, sort of Asian influence uh, 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 with your uh, look and your gear and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. How did that? How did that sort of kind of come into development and sort of finding your uh, finding your character, so to speak? When I first started, everyone thought I was Asian, even though I'm not. <laughs> so, um, you know, people would like bow to me when I would come to the gym. Like usually, you know, you shake everyone's hand. People wouldn't shake my hands. They would bow to me, literally. <laughs> and so it was like, oh, you're going to have an Asian gimmick. You're going to have an Asian. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I've been telling everyone my whole life I'm not Asian. And they're mm-hmm. like, uh, but then Fala Ba, who is um, in PWS, he came down to Reality Wrestling. And he has like a Filipino gimmick. And they kind of put me with him because of my name. And I do... You know, people tend to confuse me a lot to be Asian. So I went ahead and did it. At first, I wasn't excited about it because I was like, I don't really know too much about this culture. I don't want to, like, you know, just be rude. I don't want to offend anyone with this. And but once I started getting into it, I talked to Booker about it more. And it kind of started turning into, like, a Mortal Kombat kind of influence more than just, like, Asian. So... And I was coming up with my character, kind of like my moves in the ring. I was looking at a lot of like Mortal Kombat, Katana, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, and, and obviously uh, going into 2016, obviously people kind of set goals for, for, for the year. Uh, and, and you even you know expanded beyond reality of wrestling. I know you recently uh, came into Inspire Pro Wrestling. And I know you're even challenging for the uh, XX Division title at our next event uh, just in a few weeks. Uh, not just there, but just in general in wrestling. What are some of your goals for, for 2016? I mean, obviously the ultimate goal would be to go to NXT, but um, kind of like my mini goals to get up to the big one would be to expand more, uh, try to get shows outside of Texas. Um, I've been working in talks with another promotion in Louisiana and one in Oregon. So hopefully, God willing, um, I'll be going over there soon. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, also, we have some of our, uh, our regular questions here on the show that we kind of ask everyone. Uh, the first that we have is, uh, what are you watching currently as far as wrestling goes, as far as um, either for studying purposes or also just recreation? Is there anything currently that you kind of uh, have your eye on? Uh, NXT. Okay. <laughs> NXT a lot. Um to be honest, I just really just don't have time to watch TV ever, mm-hmm. like not even Raw, which kind of sucks. I always have to like watch everything on the network. But I've been actually watching a lot of um, SmackDown replays from like 2002 through 2005 mm-hmm. in NXT. So that's awesome. kind of my focus right now. Very cool. Uh, 
Very cool. Uh, and, and the last question we kind of uh, end the show with, and, and uh, many of our guests take it in many different directions, so feel free to uh, take it however, you, uh, which way you wish. But um, uh, what is, in your opinion, the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? The best and the worst thing? The best, honestly, is just living your dream. I always tell people, like, if 10-year-old me knew what 22-year-old me would be doing, 10-year-old me would freak out. Like, <laughs> he's so happy. Like, whether I got signed or not, like, I would be, you know, just going out for your dream. The worst part about it is, I say, it's kind of tough. Sometimes, just sometimes it can be egos when you get in the ring. Uh, sometimes going to different um, indie promotions. One thing that I that is so amazing about books is that when you go back, um, step through the curtain and you talk to book, like he'll tell you every little thing you did wrong. And like right now we have Bruce Pritchard working with us. So Bruce would tell you everything you did wrong, but he also tell you everything you did right. So you get some true constructive criticism to make you better. And sometimes when you step through the curtain at an indie show, it's just like, oh, good job. Oh, good job. And I remember like one of my first matches, it was like, oh, good job. And I was like thinking to myself, like, that was terrible. Why didn't they tell me that was terrible? Like <laughs> I was expecting to get like chewed out by the promoter because that's what would happen if I was doing that at books. Hmm. So that's the only part that I'd say is like the work. Sometimes you don't, depending on where you work and you really want to get better at the end of the day. That's what you want to do. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, well, thank you very much for, for coming on and talking with us. Uh, definitely. Uh, seems like some big things for you going forward. Uh, if people want to follow you on social media uh, or if they, if you have any upcoming events you'll be appearing on that uh, people can check you out at, uh, feel free to uh, plug away. Awesome. Well, obviously, the new era begins at Reality of Wrestling at a new facility uh, January 30th. That's going to be like the biggest show of the year, I believe. And it's going to be huge. Um, also, obviously, Inspire Pro January 17th. So, awesome. And I believe people can follow you on Twitter uh, uh, at underscore high uh, on. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, definitely go check, uh, check her out. Uh, definitely like i said it seems like a lot of great stuff heading uh your way and uh definitely going to be cool to see so uh once again thank you very much for joining us uh and we're going to take a quick break and uh well we take a look at everything that happened this past week in story tribe media and we'll be right back mr sawtooth mr sawtooth what we, we one that's my lens cap I, i'm gonna i'm gonna need that what is your lens cap yes oh this is my lunch we have this this lovely lady over here i'm still gonna eat this what is this uh, this is it for the internship. That we for the internship. Did you get it from that other fella that was down here before that we talked to? No. You here for the internship? This doesn't smell like vodka. What? You think we got vodka down here? What are we rich? I don't know. That guy just handed me a cup. Which guy? The guy who was here for the internship? No, that other guy. He's kind of scroungy looking. Scroungy looking. Yeah. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh, the tiny dog. Yeah. The tiny dog from upstairs. So you're here for the internship. That's good. That's good. I got a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. Qu question number one. What is your experience with the underground? I like underground rap. Like presents and gifts? Like, I don't know. Um, oh, man. I'm just having a bad day. I just was at this party, and then my boyfriend just started making out with his other girl, and... Well, that sounds terrible, but why Why has that led you to come underground? This guy said that there was an underground party, and I just needed to get away, and just... Oh, my boyfriend just cheated on me. This might be good. This might factor into the job interview. How are you with disposing of bodies? Bodies? Bodies, you know. We can start small. We'd like a pigeon. I don't know. Just... just Throw them in garbage? River? What? Not in the river. That's the correct. She got the right answer. That's, that's good. It smells like coffee. What is coffee? I don't know. It's like a drink you wake up with in the morning. Oh, blood from a cat's face. All right, I got it. Hey, guys, we're back, and uh, thank you so much to our guests. And by the way, there was a little clip of Sawtooth Willie, some, some fun stuff we've been doing lately. Uh, you can check out more of that. Look up Sawtooth Willie on YouTube and the Facebook, and we've been having a lot of fun with that lately i think you'll enjoy it if you're like our humor across the mayhem show network um well hey it's from one of the originals so 
Uh, so, hey, I wanted to make a mention. So, uh, you know, we really are on the mission of, of, you know, you guys, you know, can really can really check out a lot of the stuff that we talk about here. It's not just, I know we say, you know, we were plugging local shows in San Antonio, uh, Houston, Austin, wherever. Uh, but uh, especially reality of wrestling is definitely very uh, media minded, I guess you can say. And if you go over to reality of wrestling dot com, you can check out our guest and so much more. Their, their TV show is actually available over there. So uh, click on over the uh, uh, ROW on TV and uh, uh, the recent episodes and they'll actually pop up here and they're on YouTube. And so you can see what Booker T is doing down there and, and what kind of talent is coming out of Booker T's uh, a, a group down there, and and who knows? I, I I think if you're being trained and in the promotion by somebody who happens to be on uh, 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 SmackDown every week, I, I I I'm pretty sure you 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 got a good uh, chance of uh, uh, coming up and get a chance maybe with NXT or something in the, in the future. Uh, so go yeah. check that out, realityofwrestling.com. And like I say, we try to talk with as many people as we can where you guys can access some either on YouTube or buying the DVDs, buying the digital downloads, however that may be, or going to or or firing up the Google Translate and uh, doing the New Japan Pro Wrestling World thing, uh, as many of us did over this past week. Um, and by the way, I, I think last year we talked about New Japan really in depth on this site or on the show. Uh, we did that over on Wrestling Mayhem Show because just everybody's excited about that. So we went ahead and did that and had a great talk. Eamon uh, did a deep dive on that with uh, our friend Matt Collins that does it around the Indies article. And uh, Vaughn Johnson that joined us from Philly.com, Squared Circle, uh, in the sports section, uh, writer over there for them, uh, talking pro wrestling and everything from Phil- Philadelphia. Uh, so uh, go check that Wrestling Mayhem Show 501 for the, uh, the in-depth talk about Kingdom Wrestle Kingdom uh, 10. Uh, Eamon, uh, so it's the new year. It's been a little bit. It is. We, 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 <laughs> we ended pre-Christmas in a very New Year's fashion, I suppose. Uh, and, and I was thinking, and man, it's the new year. It's the new year's resolutions time. And what are our resolutions for indie wrestling? I, I want to take this a couple of different ways, but I think first of all, uh, I think, you know, us as, um, viewers or participators or however you want to take this part of it, what is your personal new year's resolution, uh, around indie wrestling right now? Uh, I, I, I thought about this a lot and I kind of think I, I view this from like a viewer sort of perspective. Um, for me personally, uh, there's a lot of great indies and we talked about this on the main wrestling mayhem show. There's a lot of great alternatives and stuff like that that's emerging right now in wrestling. I think it's the biggest like stylistic time. I think for pro wrestling, it's been in a while, maybe ever. Uh, and I'm very excited to see that. Personally, uh, I, I, we, I've gotten into the uh, to the New Japan. Uh, I obviously, myself and Tony, I joined you for a, a bit of a look at uh, uh, Mexican wrestling as well. Oh, um, great episode. I had so much fun with that. I, I didn't need to... Oh, well, actually, we'll get into a little bit of that in a moment, I think. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, but uh, uh, I think the next thing, I really need to get into British wrestling. Oh, wow. Um, I, I know of British wrestling... But it seems there has been such a wave of, of great British promotions and British talent currently uh, uh, that it's really it, – it, I think it's really became something very special with uh, – I know Progress uh, is, is probably considered one of the top ones right now as far as uh, uh, Indigo's uh, uh, Revolution uh, – I think it's Rev Pro is another one uh, that, that comes to mind. I think there are a couple others I can't think of right now. But uh, as far as talented people – go like in indies in the uk are really spectacular right now you know i just watched um uh this past year's pro wrestling gorilla battle of los angeles uh and uh to me the talents that really stuck out to me were the british talents uh your zach saber juniors uh your tommy ends your will ospreys um there's and even like lower uh smaller ones like your mark andrews who's on tna currently um like I really think there are some amazingly talented people right now in the UK. Um, and everyone's talking about it. There's such a great like sort of vibe about all these promotions and, and a style and, and a production value to that style. Um, uh, it's, it's something really special. And I think 2015 uh, was I almost, and, and a lot of people can make the contenders of this, but it was almost the year for UK wrestling, you know, 
everyone was talking about it and as far as like indie wrestling uh, is concerned. So yeah, I, I need to, I definitely need to start following it a bit closer. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of along those. I, I mean, not not anything in particular. I just need to not participate. Obviously, I'm participating, uh, but I need to uh, uh, explore more. Uh, mm. I, I, of course, have kind of rededicated saying, uh, okay, Lucha Underground Season 2, I'm going to watch that as dedicated as I do NXT. Okay? Uh, I have to. I have to. I missed out on something amazing last year. And, and again, I did live kind of vicariously through you guys, um, but I was also at a spot where I was like, I, I want to watch this. I don't want to just throw this on in the background, which, unfortunately, if yeah. I want to watch more wrestling, it has to be... Uh, I throw it on the Chromecast or I throw it on an iPad over here while I'm working. It's the only way I can watch more wrestling physically at this point, right? Um, and, and I actually sat here and I put in, I have a to-do task list that I have for work and personal stuff. It helps me kind of get organized. And I just put two entries in here for Tuesday and Thursday that says, watch some indie slash Japanese slash Mexican wrestling. So mm. even if I go and say, go to realityofwrestling.com or or pull up new japan world or 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 other wherever i I can find it and just watch something an episode of this uh, an old show of this something from the g1 climax last year just pull up a a a a a list from from youtube you know what i mean um Mm -hmm. and and throw that on at least like i'm uh, i have the opportunity to discover something new I'm checking it out. I'm getting into the maybe the Mexican wrestling and what we talked about. And by the way, we had a great discussion. You guys really kind of uh, uh, laid out a lot of stuff that you could be checking out uh, uh, in Mexico of CMLL and uh, AAA wrestling. Uh, by the way, just following those on my Instagram and Facebook has been <laughs> really awesome lately. Uh, it's really cool to have just have that little bit of something different in the feed. And I keep forgetting that I followed them, and then I just get random luchador pictures, and I'm just like, okay. All right, or, or a random Instagram <laughs> video or something like that. It's it's a nice surprise, personally, uh, for something like that. But no, again, and just getting out there, exploring this kind of stuff, and I'm I'm just kind of reinvigorated the excitement that season two is coming on Lucha, uh, the excitement of uh, just coming off of. I, I watched Wrestle Kingdom this morning. Okay, so <laughs> I'm still kind yeah. of on a buzz off of that, and then uh, you know participating and hearing you guys talk about them for for I think we went nearly an hour on that uh, during Wrestling Mayhem show. So. I, 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 that's where I'm at. It's like, ah, wrestling more. Yes. And then, and then, then there's also the, uh, realization this morning was like, you know, how I was complaining last night, I think with you guys in the hangout, I was like, I cannot possibly watch more wrestling. What a mm. problem to have that. I want to watch more wrestling that that is that's a, problem. a great problem. To have. It's an amazing problem to have. If you're a fan of wrestling and, and such a huge fan that we are, that we do podcasts and get involved in the ways that we do. I think, I think that's it. Uh, professionally, uh, I mean, it's not a new resolution. It's what it always is. Um, the, the groups that I work with, the RWA, the IWC, and all the other guys that I just, you know, help with videos to put them out there on digital download. Uh, it, it, the goal has always been to make these bigger, make them, um, you know, get, get an IWC and an RWA to the point where, uh, uh, you know, where they're the more talked about promotions out there, Right. Where there's somebody from around the world uh, saying, "Man, you gotta check out this, this IWC stuff. You gotta check out this RWA stuff. There's some cool stuff happening here." And um, I, 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 I have the notes that that they're getting international attention in some fashion. Uh, so I, I think it's interesting to see that uh, happening, at least in the numbers that I'm seeing, and and seeing that grow. It's definitely grown. Um, it, it, it's grown in number of people participating and, and contributing and, and and especially with the growth of indie wrestling.us this this but these past few months and uh and getting that figured out so that's where i'm at that I, do you have a professional one i mean from where you're um, at i mean i know you touch on a few different aspects of inspire pro wrestling down there yeah i mean i think for me personally in in the in the, in the year um the thing that i think this sticks out for me is just i want to learn more like i want uh, I, I feel like I've done a, a, a decent enough job uh, at commentary. Not I'm not saying I'm great or anything. I'm far, I'm far from it. Um, but uh, my peers are, are uh, seem very receptive to my commentary and, and are very um, uh, pleased by it, especially the people who are considered my bosses, which is mainly – as 
for me, as long as I'm pleasing them, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, I just want to learn more. I, I want to get my hands in, in some more things and, and see some more different aspects of like, like production and, and just everything that goes into putting together a wrestling show. Um, uh, I, I, I want to be more sort of, you know, involved in the business. Uh, I do, I think my only other like definitive goal or, or resolution or whatever for, for 2016 would probably be, I want to get booked at least one other place. Um, uh, all my work right now has been with Inspire Pro Wrestling and I love Inspire Pro. But I'm never, you know, obviously thinking of like leaving or anything like that, but like, I, I, I don't know. I feel like it would be very uh, validating mm-hmm. to be booked one place else. You know, I, 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 I think that would just be for me, that's kind of my goal, you know, and to have, you know, somebody else appreciate your work. You know what I mean? Um, uh, cause I, I mean, I love that inspire does, but a lot of these people are becoming you know, my friends and stuff like that. So, um, I, I don't know. I just, the, you know, hopefully branching out, I think in 2016 as well, you know, and that just goes right. back to the whole learning more sort of thing. Right, right. And I think I think that's definitely, you know, the, uh, you know, am I here just because this is the group that I've been running with, right? Uh, that somebody mm-hmm. else is, oh, I, I want that guy to be part of this. You know, I, I think that's, that's, that's very important in, in the spot you're at. Because you're really, like, I, I, I kind of make the statement, like, I'm not like, when, when, when people want to work with me, it's like, I listen, I don't need to... I don't need you to prove myself. You know what I mean? When it, when it, yeah. comes, when it comes to, Hey, work for our promotion. Um, no, I'm working for these and that's fine. And whereas if you're a wrestler and announcer says, Oh, I'm working for this group over here locally. And I don't really want to go anywhere else. That's like, well, then you're not, that's you know, kind of frowned upon that's, you're, you're not doing anything versus me. It's just like, well, I can't physically do anything else. So no, we're not, <laughs> we're not going to do anything else, you know? And that's yeah. been the argument for me. Um, I would love to expand to be able to, to, to do more promotions. Uh, it, but you know, it's, it, they, but then they're not getting me. And I think that's what they're trying to get because it's, it's, it's part of it. Cause I think, I think, I don't know. I, I, the, the, you know, I, I think, you know, people have told me they like the way I put the videos together in the way I edit. Uh, and, and you won't get that if I'm not there. Uh, so, because frankly, I, I have a philosophy of, uh, no, I'm going to live switch because we're going to turn this around and that's another full day. They have to do this. And you know how like wrestling DVDs don't come out for like a month because nobody has time to do them because it takes a freaking long time to do them, uh, to put those, put that footage together. That's why we do it live or bust, uh, for the most part, unless I've been double booked, um, which I can have no control over. And I just kind of deal with it uh but uh you know versus you you know yeah you want that ex- expanding you want the, somebody else to find value in you because you want to do eventually down the line you know you you have the idea that uh, you could work for wwe and do a thing right and make a career of yeah. this um yeah, i mean i mean he's hoping <laughs> right 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 but i mean you're, right. you're on that trajectory like any wrestler would be to 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 a degree um whereas i really don't want to work for WWE is it, you know, yeah, yeah, it was, I, I, well, I mean, it's so realistic. different from what you, yeah. it's so different from what you do, you know. Right, right. I'm not, I mean if I if I would do that um if I was if, if I would do it I would be a union I would be a union worker, you know. There's no mm-hmm. uh glory for me to go work on something like that. It'd be cool if somebody knocked on my door and I got offered a job at WWE, I would I would probably do it. Uh, if there was nothing keeping me from anything else in my life, right? Um, but I also know if I did that, I would not be working for WWE for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like, that's not a thing that I would do. I would do it just to be like, Psh, wow, there was that time I worked for WWE, and that's cool, you know? And then I can go do something else. That's kind of the nature of, I think, the business I'm in um, for that. Uh, you know, that's not a career making thing for me, I don't think. Uh, at least the way my career works. So I don't know. That's my <laughs> thoughts on that. <laughs> so um, awesome. So I, I guess lastly, uh, we're going to make New Year's resolutions for other people now. Uh, <laughs> we're going to tell you what you should do. We're going to tell you what you should do. 
Um, so I, I, you know, it is kind of a broad thing. I don't think anything in, in specific, uh, anything like, well, you know, this company should be doing more of this, you know, uh, but broadly, I think for indies as a whole, or maybe a wrestlers as a whole, or something that you observe, this is kind of like the best and worst of question. Uh, what is a new year's resolution that you have for independent wrestling for you them know, I, out there? I, because you cause you mentioned this question before we started, and I literally I was like I don't know what I I would say I don't know what I would think of, and then it came to me, and this isn't really, I mean this apply because this applies to independent wrestling as a whole, um, and but I think I apply it more toward the more Texas scene. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And and that's it's just fine. From that's stuff fine. Like, that could be localized. That is fine. Yeah, I mean some. I mean just in, it still applies to all Indies, just in general though, and it just. Stuff I've been seeing in the last like month or so, I've been seeing so repeatedly, and that's the idea that we mentioned it before. There are so many viable alternatives now more than ever, and the reason I think there are those viable alternatives, and the, and I mean from the fact that there are are alternative is that they're doing something different. Uh, the formula, there's no formula for wrestling. Mm-hmm. There's no. Uh, I mean, there's a, a, a somewhat of a formula, except but, for but, there's a ring and pins and this, and there's a story and two people's uh, two people's uh, fighting in the middle of the ring. Uh, and, and, and there's a there's a physical formula in how right. to execute it, right? But there's not a physical, there's not a emotional, you know, sort of general formula into how to how a crowd reacts. What is you know, you know, um, what's right and what is wrong. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. I've just been seeing so much stuff, particularly on Facebook recently. I don't know if you get this a lot, but people sharing stuff uh, of the stuff of Joey Ryan doing the whole uh, uh, <laughs> King of Dong style stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's killing the business. Shared, yeah, and how it's killing the business. And how uh, someone shared a photo, I think it was from Beyond Wrestling, of, uh, it was from a, like, a while ago. Of someone doing uh, a choke slam with the force from like uh, basically, you know, giving a guy a choke slam when he's halfway across the ring, basically, mm-hmm. um, and how that's killing the business. Someone shared a fo- and someone shared a video of a PWG show where Ricochet and Samurai Del Sol were having an exchange, and it's very like a flippy kind of exchange, and being like, "Well, that's not wrestling." You know, those guys should be, you know, telling a story. And it's like, one of those guys just wrestled in front of 40,000 people and the other's currently employed by the WWE. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) creativity is what makes indie wrestling great. It's what makes indie wrestling different than the WWE. I think WWE, I think in aspects is allowing more creativity, especially like in NXT and stuff like that. But still, you're being... You're saying this is what you sort of have to do. You know, to tell somebody this is wrong, this is right, is it's, I consider wrestling an art. It's not a science, it's an art. I like form. that. And like art is very subjective. You know, I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this thing will piss people off. Maybe people who are in Texas and are watching this have probably pissed at me. Whatever. Um, I, I just think that. You know, what works for you works for you. And I think there is an aspect of Texas where it, for a long time, has been very dated. Mm-hmm. People say that a lot of people say Texas wrestling currently isn't what, you know, it's not what Philly is and it's not what Los Angeles is and it's not what, you know, the East Coast is. But it doesn't have to not be. You know what I mean? Like it, I think a lot of it is, is because some people are very stuck in their mindsets. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're wrestling in front of a specific crowd that wants to see a certain style of wrestling and it's very – it's more simplistic, that's fine. There's a certain style of people in, in Texas who want to see, you know, uh, you know, Joey Ryan do a test of strength with his, with his uh, uh, genitalia. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's – there's a different – know your audience and, and not everything works for every – you know, for every audience. You can't, you know – be an inspired pro show, maybe for example, and work a side headlock, and and you know that's the whole thing is you're you know doing a simple kind of match that you would wrestle in front of you know you know 
a couple hundred people who, you know, aren't like diehard wrestling fans. Mm -hmm. It's different. And I don't know. It's just my resolution is just people should stop being so critical of what others are doing. I don't I don't know. It's <laughs> And it just, it, this is honestly just been spurred by recent stuff because yeah. it's been happening so frequently, I've been noticing. Yeah. Uh, as of late. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I think you're in the right spot there. Uh, I, and I guess mine is going to be a version of that. So you're saying, like, stop, stop, stop judging th these other things just because you don't understand it. Uh, yeah. It feels like. Uh, my thing is uh, to that, like, you know, being different and everything. I, I think I think people that run indie companies um, and, and the wrestlers, I think, get this a little bit, too, that they need to stick out. Right. And and not like, mm -hmm. well, I'm just like a mini rock. I'm like a mini Stone Cold. I'm a mini Hulk Hogan, whatever. Is anybody trying to be mm -hmm. a mini Hulk Hogan these days? Um, but but, you know. But as far as production, as far as shows, you know, even looking at, you know, some of these indie like online shows, TV shows, whatever. Uh, and and trying to see, you know, I think Lucha Underground sticks out because it's a true alternative. It does not feel like anybody else. Uh, mm -hmm. Wrestle Kingdom sticks out because, well, it's Japanese wrestling. It feels like different stuff, and it's now accessible to us, right? It doesn't feel like anything I would attend in America, that I don't think. And And I think when you're an indie in a town that's doing this, but trying to be bigger and trying to pretend to be bigger... Um, you know, when you're trying to do certain production values, like, well, why are we doing these production values? Um, because I want this to get to the point. I want to feel like we're WWE. I was like, great. You'll be the second run or third run or 50th run WWE want to be right. And yeah. all the people will notice is that, Oh, look, they're doing things like WWE. How quaint they'll never be WWE. Um, so what are you doing different? You know, Chikara was like, has shows where there's like 20 people in the crowd and these weird venues but they're doing something different and interesting, and it's and 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 it's it's, it's great, you know. Mm -hmm. AIW is is doing things to kind of stick out on social media, as we talk about. But it's been really great, uh, and and they have a different feel and a more raw feel, and not really like anything I think that's on TV right now, right? Um, and I think I and I think also with like companies like them, uh, I think more you also get companies that try to just be Ring of Honor as well, right? Right? They try right. to be PWG. And it comes off as fake. Like uh, AIW, I think does a great job, for example, because yeah, they have that sort of style of wrestling, but they also book like Bunkhouse Buck and uh, who else? Like uh, who did, like Vader and like just weird names. Yeah, but they're yeah. the company. But they're now, they're now known as the company that books all these weird names. Mm -hmm. Like the and and there's a selling value to that, right? Um, I think that that extends to promotions and also sends to some wrestlers. Like, yeah, we're, we're living in an age where more indie wrestlers are getting looked at by WWE. Uh, the style is different in WWE to where those indie wrestlers can succeed now as opposed to, you know, maybe 10 years ago where they would have been passed up on mm -hmm. um, or looked down upon. But at the same time, the people that they are signing right now have set themselves apart and have built a following. Right. Um, if I see another guy, no, and I'm just saying, try not to be just another guy in trunks who's like characters like I'm badass and I'm cool, I'm cool and I'm good at wrestling. <laughs> but to be to be fair, and I've heard this is the people that try to be too complicated. Um, that's that's true. I, there, there's. I just think. I mean, they're, they're just a little bit. I mean, we saw this on Breaking Ground. Uh, the you have to come out and present yourself and be confident, and you have to convey what you are in the first five seconds you walk out that curtain and mm -hmm. if you think your story takes yeah but then i'm also this this and this it's like well if you can't fit that in the first five seconds and that's just crowd i mean that's part of the art that's, that's honestly that's part of the true. art that's theater that's 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 part of the art form it is conveying to the crowd you know a story and them getting into it like you were kind of talking about before so um sorry. I, I i just think that if like the extent of your persona so to speak is i am great at wrestling and i i wear trunks and and i'm, and I'm great at wrestling welcome you have to you have to be really great at wrestling welcome to the first uh anybody i know out of a training camp uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> a like, very like few and, and maybe that's, that's just me but i don't know i see guys and it's like yeah you're you're putting on pretty great matches but like 
you know, the only way that you're going to get more opportunities sort of like that is that you have, you have to have something about yourself right, right. that, that, that captivates people. Right. It doesn't have to be an over the top character, but no, no, uh, or just, just enough of one, you know, a mix of, Oh, you know, he's this and the, he does this in the ring, you know, and how mm-hmm. that comes off. You know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, looking just at, uh, uh, you know, the people that we, we know in our circles here, you know, uh, we just talked to tonight. Like she, she's kind of got a, an interesting air and she, <laughs> I love that she's leaning into the, the not really an Asian thing, uh, mm-hmm. uh, was kind of an interesting wrinkle to that. Uh, but even looking at somebody like an Andrew Powell, seeing him develop through the years, you know, into yeah. what he is, uh, which is, you know, this kind of wild, wild guy that, that runs around and has the hair and, 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 and used to have a goggle fetish or something like that. Or mm-hmm. even Darren De Niro, like, while well, we, you know, he just looks like kind of pretty muscly guy that smiles, uh, like a model and, and, and he's kind of goofy otherwise, um, does great, does some pretty good stuff in the ring. Obviously got some attention to some people in Britain. So maybe you'll see him on some of, uh, uh, that stuff you want to watch this year. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, but he's trying stuff too, you know, he's going to do this Backstreet Boy thing. And in the, in the one promotion we were talking about, um, I was bugging the promoter to see if he was bringing that over to, to IWC. Uh, and, 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 and he's trying some stuff out, you know, he, he's still in that, that, that growing phase too. So yeah, there's that. I, I, I think also like we're living in an era as well, where being able to captivate people is more important than anything. I think the people that are successful in WWE and Lucha Underground and New Japan aren't just the ones that are great at wrestling. They're the ones that captivate people and have that emotional connection with the audience. Uh, I think there was a period in indie wrestling where if you were putting on great matches, that was, that's what made you popular. Right. And you know that's what I mean? It. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think and that's, that's kind of, that's kind of weaned back. I feel a bit. Right. I, I mean, well, also I think the advent of social media, YouTube, Oh, that guy just entertained me on YouTube doing doing X. Um, now I want to pay attention to his matches. You know, I, I it's the whole package, like we we're talking about, like we we're talking about uh, before about guys like Cocabana becoming an entire character and persona online, and really using that as a tool. You know what we talked about before. You know, you know what they should do. You know what people should do to 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 practice their promos. They should get on Snapchat and cut a ten second promo on yeah. people. You know, or or get on Periscope and start just cutting a promo on anybody that's out there. You know, anything that moves. I mean, it's practice, you know, and it's practice is going to go away in 24 hours, too. So it's not mm-hmm. you don't have these horrible promos floating around YouTube 10 years from now when you're in WWE. Right. Uh, you know, I think that's that's I think that's an important part, too. So I, don't know, I, I think it's some great stuff. You know what another great resolution is? Um, make sure you uh, put on your schedule to weekly uh, check out around the indies from the great Matt Collins yes. over there a visual representation and breakdown of your week in, in indie wrestling. Uh, Cause I know it's, there's a lot, there's barbed, barbed wire wrestling still happening um, <laughs> around. <wrestling. laughs> Holy crap. Pro wrestling gorilla had another show. It feels like they have them every two weeks at this point. Does that seem right? Um, you know, About I, every I, month or so, yeah. on point wrestling had a, a barbed wire uh, match. That's great. There's some great pictures <laughs> over here. Uh, well, you said a couple of things that looked like it caught your eye uh, when, it, when it came to uh, 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 Matt's article this week. Do you recall what that was at this point? Uh, I can't seem... I have... Other than holy crap, barbed wire. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, I guess there's a market for that, for the barbed wire still. Um, uh, oh, God, I wish I had it pulled up. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, there was... I mean, I, like, I always love Matt's article because I think it just gives a really great sort of look at, at everything and, and it, it gives you sort of a nice kind of like, obviously we went, I talked to the story about this, like the visual stuff and, and yeah, it's, it, it's really great. I would definitely encourage people to check it out. Awesome. Awesome. Some great stuff. Like I said, very, very multimedia, some great stuff there. Um, and that's why it's important as an indie that you put your stuff out there uh, and, yeah. and have these opportunities and have these bite-sized bits that people can can share share like this and get it around. You never know. You never know when air jock is going to happen, or or from Inspire Wrestling when that one girl went through the table, right? Or or even just I saw pictures all uh, all this week of uh, Instagrams of the lot of Doom's new outfits. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never know what's going to hit. So put it, put it out there and give just every time you put out a clip or a video or let a fan do it at a show, it's an opportunity to find more fans 
<laughs> in podcasting and a lot of things that we do around here is the one fan at a time philosophy. Oh, I talked to a person at a thing at a booth and now maybe they'll go listen to a show. You know, hey, one of those people is in the chat room tonight. And he writes yeah. a and he writes a blog. And I hope he mentions this on his awesome blog. He's got a really good blog about the local stuff, the Trigar. Um uh, out there i've been um, i can't remember the blog name off the top of my head but uh, i share it out whenever i see something pop up there on our mayhem show uh, uh twitter account um i mean that that's the way it is for all that kind of stuff hey man i gotta get out of here it's been an awesome uh first night in 2016 of podcast day you guys can join us we're live.sortronmedia.com live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com about 11 p.m eastern time uh every tuesday uh amen he's at amen to please yes i am yeah. I inspire for Rez on Twitter as well. Yes. And uh where and our guest, her Twitter is underscore how do you say her name again? Uh hi Yan. Hi uh, it's spelled it for those looking to get it spelled it that's H Y A N E uh Young, as in as in young and old. Uh, or, so, or get that spelling from our from this listing on on the YouTube or 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 at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. We'll we'll have that up there as well. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for her, to her for joining us. And again, check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com. Subscribe to this and all the other shows, and drop us line. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Thank you so much, and please support indie wrestling through all twenty six. For the taste of the poor uh, Sing, sing, sing You know how I act now If you got a problem Come and see it from a back down Act wild Steady sipping check Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com